Hello and welcome to another episode of Oh So Curious. Oh, oh, never mind. DCU Daily. We were doing that tomorrow. I already messed up. But anyway, we're talking about <laughs> Pruitt Taylor Wins. That's that's a name that I, just does not roll off my tongue. But we're talking about the new uh, Pa Kent, the Jonathan Kent to the Clark Kent of Superman in James Gunn Superman. And uh, well, it's a casting that certainly wasn't one that I was expecting because I haven't really seen much of Pruitt Taylor Wentz before. And what I have seen of him, you know, he's usually been a character actor. He isn't, you know, he's certainly no uh, Kevin Costner, like what we got for Pa Kent and Man of Steel and then, you know, the DCEU. Uh, but but then again, you know, uh, we'll get into what the casting means. Maybe does this give us any insight into what um, James Gunn has in store for the character and, and you know, how much of a role is Pa Kent going to play in the movie? Is he just going to be in flashbacks? Is he going to be around? Like, because, you know, we always tend to get the, the situation where, uh, you know, Jonathan Kent gets killed off at some point. Um, uh, and, you know, like, that's like a growing moment for Superman. But it's like, is it really central to the character like it is central to Batman's character watching his parents die? Like, but it's so... We'll talk all about that and so much more. And of course, as always, we have with us John, who's hopefully not going to make the same mistake I just did. Uh, Pruitt <laughs> Taylor Vince. Not Pruitt at all. Taylor Vince. Uh, yes. So yeah. I know him a little bit more than you do. I've seen him in a couple things. He's in one of my favorite uh, horror movies of all time, Jacob's Ladder. Excellent film. If you haven't seen that, highly recommend it. Um, but he plays a reasonably, you know, decent role in that i've seen him in a couple other things like he was in stranger things for a little bit he does have some comic book prowess comic book adaptation prowess he was in the constantine movie uh, about 20 years ago and he was in agents of shield uh for a little bit nothing major again he's not a huge uh actor but he's been in like uh quite a few things never the really the main role so i feel like this fits for him um he was also He's also in, famously in Identity. I know that was like a movie that was like started out really good. And then by the end, like right. everybody was like, what the hell is this crap? Um, so they. Uh, so essentially, I think um, I think this is a decent choice from what I've seen of him. I think it's definitely out there and not something I would have obviously gone with, because I know a lot of people wanted to see Brendan Fraser cast as Paul Kent. You know, we're, we're going through that renaissance right now about casting. Yeah. And you know, he just, you know, doom patrol isn't a thing anymore. It got, it got canned. So it's like, Hey, you know, mm -hmm. let's open it up for, uh, let's open it up for him. And I could see that like, cause, cause he's just like a nice wholesome boy. And, uh, he, he kind of fits for that ideology of Paul Kent. Although I could, I could definitely see him as Jor-El as well. Like he's just sort of like this endless mind of like, you know, more alien side of things. I could definitely see him there too, but we'll obviously we'll get there when it's been announced. Now this hasn't been confirmed by James Gunn, but it seems like that this is like an exclusive like sort of thing from, I believe it was either Variety or Deadline. I'm not sure what, I know you have the Deadline article up, but I don't know if it was from Variety first. But I think it's a good choice. Like from what um, he he w like, we see that picture. He's like he's this big burly, you know, guy who is like m I wouldn't say more so known for villain roles, but uh, from what I've seen of him, he seems like uh, like more the villainous type because he just kind of seems like that. So I feel like with what they'll do with this iteration of the character it seems like they're going to go for someone who's like, he looks like this big burly countryman who, you know, fits into a certain box, but it turns out he's actually like this very kind, soft spoken man. Cause that's like his tone of voice. Like he definitely has that sort of tone of voice to him where, he, where you look at him and he looks like, if you like, if he was like, if like he had like a flannel, you know, like an old dingy cap, like that, yeah. ratty jeans and big boots, like, OK, this guy is going to fucking kill me. But no, he's actually like, hey, how's it going? Like just his cadence and his voice. He definitely has that like soft spoken nature. So I think that's like weirdly perfect for Paw Kent. And I really like that. Cause that's what kind of Superman is like on the outside. He's this guy with all this power and all this, you know, you know, all these muscles and powers and, you know, he's flying all over the place. Oh my God. He's like this godly figure, 
but inside he's just a you know he's just a country boy you know he's he's just who just so happens to you know fall from the sky and have these powers so i really like that they did that so i i'm i'm curious with how they go with that and i'm even more curious with what iteration that they'll go with because for the most part throughout superman's life from 1938 to now is usually more often than not paul kent jonathan kent is dead by the time he becomes superman so with how this version is sort of you know a smaller character actor it may seem like they're actually going to go the opposite and go for more of the post-crisis version, pre-New 52, where okay. both of his parents were still alive. And I do have a theory about that, mainly because, okay, Kevin Costner, he was the big, you know, like, he's the, he's a big name. Dude. And with a big I name Kevin comes... Kevin a freaking A-lister. Yeah, uh, he's an A-lister. Yeah. And with yeah. an A-lister, with an A-list actor, comes an A-list paycheck. So with that, maybe because of that, they want someone who's smaller not as well known more of a character actor so he's more uh he's he can be in for more movies and not have to shill out the payday of someone like kevin costner now that's hopefully my theory because i feel like um i know we've talked about this before like james gunn's inspiration uh how it's all over the place and that's great because he's going from golden age to fleischer to all-star to superman for all seasons and some of it was post-crisis. And I feel like that would be very interesting. Like he's this, like he's around, like he's around to like give Superman some fatherly advice all the time because the most popular um, iteration we have that a lot of people know in terms of what they grew up with was Superman, the animated series, which did take inspiration from post-crisis where Paul Kent was still alive. Right. So I feel like that would be a great way to go because it, it's just kind of different at this point. Yeah, uh, mainly the shows in the 90s did take inspiration from that because that's what it was at the time, Lois and Clark being the other. I feel like that's just a good way to go because, one, it shakes things up. Two, it's unique. And three, we haven't seen it a much. And, you know, and plus, I feel like that's just nice to see. That's just overall nice to see that, like, we don't really need Superman's father to die you know like like obviously mm. it's integral that batman's parents die because that's what causes right. him to like i understand like, i know people are gonna yell in the at me in the comments like well that's why he becomes superman because his father dies so he that prompts him to go to metropolis get out of smallville because you know he needs to move on but i feel like there's like more reason to that it's like he's like a guy that realizes he has like a bigger destiny and he doesn't necessarily need his father to just kick the bucket immediately. And he's like, Oh, now I got to go to Metropolis. I feel like there's better reasoning for him to go off to Metropolis to, you know, go to the daily planet and all that shit and become something, something and someone greater than just a country boy uh, on a farm. So I feel like, Batman, it's integral. Superman, it's not as integral. And I hope that that's where they go with this. Because I feel like that's a really good way to go. Yeah, it's also like Hunter Iggy's in the chat. Just like he mentioned that, you know, the the actor, um, Pruitt Taylor Vince, is like 63 years old. Um, and that just feels like the right age for what we are getting in terms of, you know, what where Clark Kent will be in his life. As well as then, of course, you know, where his parents are by virtue of that. And the, the biggest thing for me that, that stood out about this is, of course, he's a very different profile of actor that mm -hmm. you know, we're getting compared to what we've got in the past. Like, we got Glenn Ford in 1978, you know, iconic. He did 310 to Yuma, you know, Final Verdict, Raw Nerve. Like, you know, he, he was big back in his day. Yeah, he was um, part of the Hollywood golden age, you know. He's absolutely. Like, he, and, you know, legend. of course, Kevin Costner, right? Like, you know, legends, absolutely, like, both of them. So, yeah. whereas here, you know, when you search the name Pruitt Taylor Wentz, you'll recognize a lot of the projects he's been in. You know, yeah. he's certainly a veteran of the comic book industry. He's been in Constantine. We had the pictures up earlier. Um, he was in Marvel's Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, he's been in Stranger Things. Of course, you're seeing, like, pictures of The Walking Dead right now. 
Um, uh, there was another one that I'm forgetting. There was was there another DC project that he was a part of? I feel like he's he's. Just, I mean, I just saw the pictures of X Files. He he was one yeah. of the bad guys of the week in the X Files. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall, when you look at look at the breadth of experience, he's just he's more of a character actor who's been in a lot of roles where. You'll see him, but you won't necessarily remember that you know he was there until you go back and watch him. Like, oh yes, I saw him there. Uh, he's this, right. he's you know right now in Lady in the Lake on Apple TV Plus. That's a good one as well. Um, so and, and and you know Bird Box, which regardless of how you <coughs> feel about it, that was a thing that he was a part of too. Um, and just to and also just mentioning earlier, you you said like you know we have the deadline story up, but the rap is who broke the the story the originally okay and, that's i knew because i knew yeah. it wasn't deadline yeah 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 like i had to i was kind of digging around and like the rap is the one they put it out exclusively and then you know deadline picked it up from there right, right. um and and of course uh when you look at the size of the man that you know physically david corn sweat is you know you put uh pro tailorman's next to him and i'm like you know you could kind of even though they're not biological father and son you could say like that kind of that kind of works um, yeah. yeah, and even like he's got that I mean, broad was, physique to him. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and the guy has been, you know, he's been everywhere, all over network television. He's been in movies. Um, he's more mm-hmm. of a TV actor than a movie actor, but he has done both. Like he was in that Heroes Reborn show on NBC, which I don't think lasted very long. No, and um, now they're trying to do that again. They're trying to bring back heroes. Again. It's like just let it die. The only, season one of the original show was the only good part. I know that yeah. the writer strike killed it, but even then, just. Let it die at this point. I know you're trying to do mm-hmm. it because superheroes are big now, but still, like, eh. Yeah. yeah, and then, you know, the other thing, so this is something Hunter Eggy brought up, and I do want to address it briefly. Like, you know, um, apparently he's being, you know, body shamed a bit on Of on course the internet, he is. Like, which, that's... You know, like, it's just, I just. Us fat like, guys are just used to it at this point. It's, it's okay. Uh, it's just not fair. Because the, at the end of the day, like, you know, like, A, that's not right just on principle. And then B, um i just think like you know that shouldn't that's not a defining character like you don't need to get somebody who looks like yeah you know, like why hero. do you like, need it's not it like matter. he's pl- it's, it's not like he's not. playing superman exactly. he's playing like a like, farmer not, and Robert the thing Hansen is refusing to exercise to be bad i mean like and even like his look was fine like the guy that only had one yeah. shirtless scene in the whole movie so i'm like yeah and then i feel like I feel um, like it kind of works even better because when you look at a lot of farmers, not all of them, mm-hmm. they're usually yeah. bigger, broader, fat guys. Yes. Like, I, I, mean, I mean, I mean, you have that famous that meme sense. of that guy who's like, it ain't much, but it's honest work. That guy who unfortunately yeah. passed away a couple of years ago, but that guy, he was a farmer and he was like, a, he was fat. So, you know, because yeah. I feel like when it comes to farming work, you're not really like. You're, it's not like a muscular thing it's more like because and the thing is if you look at um well, strong it is, men it's not it's not like one of those like it's it, it is a muscular it's thing, not physically like yourself, huge yeah. yes yes and the thing is if you look at strong men like fame like the guys who do like those weightlifting they're they're big guys they're not they're not yeah. like you know o- like drenched in oil yeah. looking like no, you know they they're took, not like, all schwarzenegger as mr olympia steroids and all that shit they're <laughs> they because the thing yeah. is they eat copious amounts of food and then they mm-hmm. work out like kind of all over and yeah. they are they're, they're just big they but they could still like they're strong obviously they win yeah. they win so many of these weightlifting competitions and, and they don't have like muscles on top of muscles because they're not that's not how the, their workout regimen works so exactly and here in the walking dead he worked on a farm <laughs> That's perfect. and he, this guess what? He was fat here too. He got the Ford truck, and then and this, 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 you could literally Photoshop like Andrew Lincoln and all the other actors out of here, and maybe put David Cornsweet in the background, and like whoever's gonna end up playing, uh, you know, a Martha Kent, then and just that's it. Like you could literally just go with that. Exactly. That, that image is. It, it almost reminds me of like the, the some of the imagery from Superman and Lois, and what that show has done so far. With the way that's been set up now yeah. i mean ultimately as far as <coughs> why but they made the decision that they did so you know yeah that's fine yeah i mean it, like at, for every project like the director usually is the one you know who knows best like you know which way is the story going to go what actor is going to best fit the role and so i think here we are seeing something similar where like like you said if you were to make a judgment uh, on you know what kind of and we're getting i think in past superman iterations with kevin costner with glenn ford they always been for that more regal route like in the sense that he's he's 
such a you know symbolically important mm-hmm. character because he's you know the the father of Superman. Like even though he's not the biological father, he's the man that you know raised the the the. the he the wasn't most... his father, but he was his daddy. Dad. He was. What was it? He, I, that's this is the. He part may have been I your think, father, like, boy, but he wasn't your daddy. He wasn't your daddy. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. I'm like, yes, this is like, I'm, I'm, that's the part that excites me the most is that like James Gunn did that. And I'm like, literally, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. Um, Cause yeah. like, those are, that's, that's one MCU of my favorite movie. moments in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I'm like, I still personally love the first one better, but that's like fair. that whole, the third act, like, and the, that whole conclusion to that storyline, I was like, that was one of the most beautiful things like the whole MCU has ever put together. I just um, feel like, and, for me personally, Volume yeah. 2 just did everything better. Like ego was great. You had a lot of these really good human moments. I feel yeah. like the, like there was more dr- drama to it. There was just like just overall, it was just such a great yeah. movie. That's why it's my favorite. Like it just did everything right. So, but that's just me. Um, but and, I, and I, I, I feel like I just yeah. feel like I know this. I don't mean for this to sound messed up or anything, but I feel like. James Gunn is a man who recently lost his father. I think like it's been a couple of years. So I feel like yeah. he is truly making this like a real, like even more so a father son story. Yeah. So I feel like, and that's why I mentioned like the, why he's getting like a smaller actor. Cause he's around for longer and he, he's more so around. So he's more, he's more th- like there he's more integral yeah. to the o- I mean, this overall no thing even of an actor he's just less oh, yeah. well known no no he's That's just all. less well known and that could be a money thing but it could also be like okay we see this smaller actor who maybe hasn't gotten that like suit even though he's 63 he hasn't got like the biggest chance so let's let's right. give him that chance exactly. because obviously yeah. he's been in all this stuff he's a great actor let's give him that chance sure he might not be an a-lister but that's okay some of the like some of my favorite my favorite actor of all time isn't in in what is like film industry terms an a-lister but he's my favorite bruce campbell the man is like might be a-list in terms of the fans but not like in like (laughs) what is deemed hollywood in hollywood circles right like i've mentioned all these actors like alan tudyk or Doug Jones is another favorite of mine. Mm-hmm. Bruce Campbell. Like, I love all these guys, or, you know, even women as well. But if we're talking about specifically actors, not actresses, I love actors, that, or like James McAvoy. James McAvoy isn't like really A list yet. I would say I he's like he more. He still flies under the radar. He's like, like more C list. Like, he's like almost yeah. there. Like, Dan Stevens is another one, another one of my favorites. Love Dan yeah. Stevens. Like, he, like all these guys, I feel like some of the best ones aren't a-listers not saying a-listers are bad like you have like you know like right. denzel washington's an a-lister and he's one of the greatest actors ever so yeah. i just in terms of my personal favorite i like guys that are that, that feel like they can do like almost everything and anything whether that be in just like how talented they are like james mcavoy just looking at split is a major fucking mm-hmm. reason why he's so talented or just someone who could just rock everything because they're just so awesome like bruce campbell bruce campbell is just like he's just so awesome so fuck it he'll he, he can do everything so i really like that as well and uh but i feel like i i like the fact that they didn't oh and speaking of constantine there he is uh mm-hmm. and uh and you know uh tim blake no the leader the leader and constantine uh and whoever he played in that god awful watchman show uh so boom you got you got the the power right there uh but yeah i just feel like i like this like the more it was it's one of those things like the more i think about it the more i'm like excited to see him to see Vince it's, it's a very this. it's i like the dynamic that this is hinting at right like yeah. that's the biggest thing because like you said there's there's more of a there, that see, realistic constantine more you know, constantine exactly yes <laughs> And and then when you t- think about like how James Gunn has treated those, that father son dynamic before on on yeah. screen with the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, not just the, the, father son, but father daughter as well. Look at the of... Suicide Squad with yeah. not his actual daughter, but Bloodsport and Ratcatcher. I feel like that was done Ratcatcher too. relatively yeah, well. Ratcatcher, Ratcatcher too, too. Um, relatively well. <laughs> Even though like the first Ratcatcher wasn't yeah. like an actual anyway, whatever. But like I feel like he does like fatherly relationships really well, depending on whether yeah. it be father son or father daughter. I feel like he does that very well, and I'm very excited for that. And I feel like it's just one of those cases where it's like 
w- nobody will expect anything, but then we might be getting like the best Jonathan Kent we've ever gotten. Like, I feel like that's what we're going to get, you know? I, and I'm not just saying that because I look like him. I'm just saying that, like, I just think he's talented. Hey, Lou, you and... said it. I was going to mention it, but then I was like, you know, that sounds like a, like a low, like, I didn't want to, like, go there. No, but like, I mean, I mean okay, a here's resemblance. the resemblance. There's Here's a resemblance. I'm just saying. If, if, like, if, you know, <laughs> Seth Rogen shaved his head and grew a beard and you compared me to him, I'd be offended. But I, but this oh, guy's okay. an actually good actor. So, like, <laughs> if you compare me to him, I'm cool with that. And, you know, boom, he's got Punisher yeah. right there. Punisher's mm-hmm. there. Awesome. You know, uh, again, more of that prowess, I guess. And, boom, Martha. There you go. Also perfect. Just so yep, many yep. superhero roles. There you go. Well, the Batman Martha, but like we get it. There's a reason why there's confusion here. Um, blame BBS Martha. for that. Why did you say that name? <laughs> Martha, where is she? Where's Martha? Martha. <laughs> All right, now we're getting real sidetracked. Um, yeah. But yeah, as far as uh, like Jonathan Kent, the character, um, I just love that. You know, you. I think when you made that point about like, yeah, I mean, you know, like what do like a lot of farmers i'm not saying every farmer looks like that like you know people come in all shapes and sizes and and color and creed and, and they're and all beautiful like that. no matter what absolutely but like i think it's when you're looking at it compared to like what we have seen in the past this is obviously very different it's it's, it's very much diverging from what we got with man of mm-hmm. steel or what we got with superman in 1978 and this feels like it's a very different kind of take i'm now excited to kind of see who we do get as martha kent who we do get mm-hmm. as uh you know um uh, why am I uh, Jorel? Um, and uh, and I've always Laura, Laura the name Van even. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like it's because in Man of Ste- in Man of Steel, we only get to see you know. Well, we get to see Russell Crowe quite a bit, but you know his biological mother, like she, she's really not yeah, around for yeah. more than the first. A little bit season. of a side it's, tangent. I'm just like I'll be yeah. really quick. I swear. I would love because <laughs> I I feel like. Oh, like I, I've always thought because I know they usually go with an older Jorel. I know that James mm-hmm. Gunn did state that they're probably going to go with someone in their 30s, but I always thought Scott Bakula would be a great Jorel. Like, because he would have made a great oh. Superman in the 90s, like late 80s, early 90s, like right around yeah. like Quantum Leap. I feel like, oh, he would be per- like, oh. he's just kind of got that like look Dude. of like, yeah. I trust this guy, that mm-hmm. mentorly like kind of. Thing to it and yeah. you know star trek he he could command like a presence enterprise yeah that show is so. underrated i know a lot of people hate on star trek enterprise i thought it was well that it was underrated people it don't was... hate it anymore because jj abrams and alex kurtzman happened so they're like well, yeah maybe i treated <laughs> you too harshly it. this is yeah, yeah they treated you because yeah. i remember people who were like kind of shooting on it and then a hate boner for that show like back in the day because I was watching Stargate and then and then Enterprise was on at the same time as like SG One and Atlantis, and I just was like everybody like was like this is not our this is this doesn't belong with everything else, and I was just like, it's Star yeah. Trek. Although let's not talk about that ending because nobody should talk no. about that ending. Well, I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, the holodeck and all, yes. Yeah, but sh- so. anyway, <laughs> right. So I mean, as far as um, all the other characters that we're going to start that you know the other family members of superman we're mm-hmm. sort of starting to fill out a lot of that now we've got of course pa kent cast which again james gunn hasn't confirmed but that usually that means and this has been the case in other situations like the nicholas holt you know announcement didn't come first from him it, it was just in a breaking news and exclusive from one of the outlets and then james gunn i think it was like a week later or something like that he posted it on his socials and was like, well, the reason why I didn't hear about it before, uh, and I know the news has been out there, but I'm finally happy to be, make it official, is because they hadn't quite finished signing on all, off all the contracts and everything else that goes with that. <laughs> so this could be one of, this most likely is one of those situations where they're still working out the details of, of the contract or, and which, or, you know, they have figured it out, but it's not completely finalized. So that's why they haven't made the official announcement or James Gunn hasn't said it. Um, and, and, you know, the one thing that that I do worry about a little bit is the movie has already been shooting for a month. That doesn't mean you know that they've they're done with a lot of obviously you know movies of this scale usually shoot for three, four, if not like five or six months, depending on just how complex the you know the the whole production plan is, how many locations are involved. There are in uh, Atlanta, 
they were in the Nordics. So, you know, they've, they've definitely been on location. They're probably doing a lot of, you know, stage soundstage filming now, but the fact that we're hearing about it so late into the process, I mean, either this has been already done and dusted a long time ago and they just didn't, you know, officially announce it or James Gunn just didn't feel like it was necessary or, you know, they're still trying to work out the, the, the details. And that probably means that Pa Kent's role is like relatively small in the movie. Uh, because we also, of course, don't know like three of his other parents, the two biological <coughs> parents and his adopted mother, uh, Martha Kent. Like we don't know who is playing those characters. And we already have a lot of like, you know, I go back to this picture that, that we got from, uh, what was it? I think Nathan Fillion took this picture, right? right? So yeah, this picture, if you look at it, all right. So you've got Peter Safran, and James Gunn. But outside of those two guys, everybody else is an actor in the movie. So I'm like, this movie's already got a pretty stacked cast, not to mention, it's got a lot to do as is. So just how deeply will his parents figure into that story, especially because it's not an origin story like Man of Steel was, so it took place almost half in Smallville, half in Metropolis. This feels like this is a very much a Metropolis story. So I just don't know how much we're going to get of, of his parents. Like, you know, like that's probably why. Like, dude, like, I'm just waiting to see now, like, who they cast as, you know, Jorel or Martha Kent, because, yeah, you had Kevin Costner and Glenn Ford, but Jorel has been played by Marlon Brando and Russell Crowe. Like, like, holy crap. Like, you know, like, where, like, where do you go from there? Like, who's, I mean, Scott Bakula would be a good, you know, next step in that to kind, of, kind of follow in the footsteps of those two actors, but... I'm excited to see where they go next because, of course, yeah. you know, we recently also, I was looking at it on social media. Um, David Cornsweat is like, was down in what, Australia or something, shooting a, or no, Mexico, I think, shooting a commercial for something. And, you know, he finally was not like all covered up in like some loose jacket. Like he had his like, <laughs> his arms out and stuff. And people were like, look, he's so jacked. I mean, he's, he's put on about, a, about the same amount of muscle as Henry Cavill did for Man of Steel. So, um, I mean, you know, uh, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see how he looks in the suit. I'm, I, I, we still haven't gotten the suit. So uh, James see. Gunn, just leak a little bit. Like, uh, I know you gave us that logo, but I want to see more, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> but that logo was, I mean, if you look at the logo. The logo I've got on this graphic here is not the logo that they showed at Comic-Con or CinemaCon. But I was able to put that together weeks ago from just the, just the picture of the suit that they put out. So, you know, it's... Um, I don't know. They're just holding this pretty tight to the chest. But plus, also James Gunn seems to be sort of going back and forth between Superman and Peacemaker, which I wouldn't be surprised that they were both filming in Atlanta. Like you know, Marvel does this all the time, where mm -hmm. they had um, Sam Sam Samuel Jackson filming uh, Secret Invasion, and the Marvels like going back and forth between the two sound stages on the same lot, like on many a days like and he talked about it he was like yeah. yeah like one day i'm doing this and then the, later on the day i'm going in the other direction and you know it's back so you gotta like maybe switch on like a different part of the character because of course chronologically that the, the, they were meant to kind of follow each other um so yeah i mean i wouldn't be surprised if james gunn is like shooting this in one studio sound stage and then shooting peacemaker in another sound stage but getting back to the news of pruitt taylor Wentz. You already said that you were excited, but like, you know, if I were to ask you, like, what, how much of a role does he have in this movie? What, what would you, would you be willing to venture a guess as to how significant uh, of a role I Jonathan think he is, is going to have? I don't think it's going to be super significant, but I think he is going to go the more post crisis way of like he'll stay alive. Like, he'll, he'll like be there. Maybe he'll show up, maybe like Superman and like in the dark. Dark Knight of the Soul part of the script. He'll, you know, be down on his luck. And similar to Superman for All Seasons, which Corrin Sweat did confirm is going to take inspiration from, he'll, like, go back to Smallville, just kind of lick his wounds type of thing, and he'll give him some good fatherly advice that he needs. Um, and then be on his merry way and defeat Lex Luthor again and, you know, do his thing. So I, I, I think he'll have, like, something. It's not going to be huge. <laughs> It's not going to be huge, but I feel yeah. like it's going to be like a, like a good amount, like maybe like maybe 10, 15 minutes of screen time, maybe 20 minutes, but yeah. not a ton. But I think considering the fact that this is a year, a quote unquote year two Superman, 
and they're not doing an origin story and they're not doing like reiterating like oh this is my life blah 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 it that right. just kind of adds to my theory that he is going to stay alive like Paul Kent is going to be alive like in the present because I feel like that just you know fits with all the information we got because like why would you cast Paul Kent if you're not going to have him live like in the present day when you're doing a quote unquote year two movie. So it's like, you know, right. Well, I mean, to be fair with man of steel that did it too, they just like had the movie take place. Like half of it was sort of, and like, yeah, but that was an origin story. story. This isn't an, yeah, origin yeah, story, exactly. So. Well, I see what you mean though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and to that end, I mean, yeah, we, we had that moment of like, you know, um, the dark night of the soul moment in man of steel. Actually, I don't know if I would call it that, but like there was that moment when he goes to the church and then he's he's like, should I give myself up to Zod? And like, you know, um, and, and then this pastor kind of says like, sometimes you have to take a leap of faith and the trust part comes later. And so maybe like that kind of moment happens with Jonathan Kent here, uh, which that moment in BVS does happen with Jonathan Kent or like in, in a way when he's like going up to the Arctic and then he's sort of just hallucinating the memory of, of Kevin Costner's Jonathan Kent. And he talks about like, you know, I remember one day that the, the, the you know the, the water ran or on the farm and it just that whole story, which is like like a cautionary tale almost. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, as far as you know the, the significance of the character, we have of course seen you know what it meant uh, in the DCEU. They they went out and cast Kevin Costner. They got him in for basically the entirety of Man of Steel. This you know the way his character dies in that movie still is debated to this day 11 years later which I'm like regardless of whether you like the movie or not they did something right because people are still talking about it. So um mm. and then of course he does make appearances in Batman versus Superman and then you you kind of hear his voice in Zack Snyder's Justice League a little bit in that second flying sequence the uh for Superman and yeah, I mean, you know, Glenn Ford back in 78. So there's a lot of, you know, uh, it's, it's big shoes to fill here for Pruitt Taylor Benz, who has a ton of experience. Like, if you look at his credits, you look at the amount of work he's done. This could, be, and, and yet this, will, you know, most likely will be the biggest role of his career. And you, let's see what he does with that. Um, guys, let us know in the comments what you think about this. I mean, I know we've been talking about it. There's there's a hundred different ways to look at this. I, you know, ultimately what it comes down to for me is that anytime you see a casting happen, you have to look at it from the perspective of the director, like what they are thinking. And, and you, usually we don't quite know exactly that until maybe the DVD commentary on the movie after it's out the theaters and you hear them talk about it, maybe or when they're promoting it. But as far as, you know, where they're going with this, um, it certainly feels like, um, we have we have got you know uh, a good uh, father son relationship that they're going to build around this um, casting, and that's something James Gunn has been very very good at. But in Guardians of the Galaxy, um, and even like the father daughter relationship and the Suicide Squad, which was you know another very very sweet part of the film. And so, if you're going by what Gunn has done in the past, then I think we have nothing to worry about because this will be you know just okay. So if you guys are worried about the casting, then, you know, just put your faith in James Gunn as you have so far. If you are loving the casting, then let us know in the comments below, you know, drop in the ch live chat. And of course, like and subscribe. We are here each and every day talking about the latest news. We initially wanted to talk about like the Justice League of the new DCU today, but then this news drops. So here we are talking about the breaking news, but, you know, we'll save that for another day. If you guys have any ideas for you would like to see in James Gunn's Justice League down the road. Uh, whenever you know we do get to see that in the new DCU, let us know that as well. And of course, we'll be back here tomorrow with DC Daily, with Movie of the Week. We'll finally, you know, review Civil War. Uh, that's a movie that uh, not the Marvel like, version, not the Mar, not Captain America Civil War, just the A twenty four Civil War. Um, and yeah, I mean, and Hunter Riggi, the, the last question you asked was, do you think we will get hints of other villains in the movie or end credit scene? I definitely think that Lex Luthor is not dying in this movie. So that might yeah. just be a hint. Unfortunately, and... even though we kind of all want to see it, like at this point, because we're so yeah. fucking sick of him. Like, I just want it to be like, oh, it's Lex Luthor, but in reality, it's yeah. just Missy, Missy Spitlick, fucking like just, <laughs> pro just like using him as a puppet or something. That would be really funny. Yeah, but wouldn't that be ironic? Dream. Because then everybody will be pointing back to that that Instagram and Threads post that James Gunn made oh, of, yeah. of the toy figure. Like, aha, it was there in front of our eyes this whole time. I can't wait for that. 
but yeah, guys, let us know in the comments what you think. Of course, uh, we'll be back here um, talking about more DC related news, whether there's more breaking news. Maybe we'll get more casting news tomorrow. If not, mm -hmm. then, you know, we'll dive into some more Peacemaker content because we've been really excited to, you know, buy that image that James can post it. And we want to talk about maybe who the villains of Peacemaker are going to be a villain, multiple villains. You know, we've got some ideas and, and John wants to we'll, you know, dive into them and we'll get get into a, probably a nice and healthy debate as you always do. But until tomorrow, guys, go out there, watch something DC related, you know, maybe go back and watch one of the Superman movies or maybe Smallville or, or one of, you know, Superman and Lois. We got a new season coming. Go check that out and come back and talk to us about it tomorrow. Until then, as always, John, it's been a pleasure. And, you know, we'll see you back here on the next episode of DC Daily.